Okay, so good evening everyone. My name is Maitasha and I'll be your moderator for today along with Hanis. So today we are having an online discussion and review of sort of the article that we all have read, which is uh, Bioinformatics and Intellectual Property Protection by M. Scott McBride that was published in 2002. Okay, so let me first introduce to the audience what this article entails. This article divulged on the essence of bioinformatics, describing its component and how this component relates to the intellectual property law. So we'll ask our panels today to go through this one by one. Okay, so I don't know how well the, our audience is acquainted to bioinformatics and its importance, so let me explain briefly. Bioinformatics is the coalescence between biology and information type. So it was able to uh, establish as the, uh, its foothold due to humankind advancement in computers and science. So this creates a huge boatload of data that is not managed, organized, or represented meaningfully using advanced computing technique. So this field does exactly that. And it is, it is a hugely profitable field because these data are so valuable for companies to invest in. This can be akin to cash data that are sold to businesses because of how lucrative it is. So the question lies as to whether these intellectual properties can be protected, how it can be protected, what kind of law can they be subjected to, and whether it is practical to subject them to these laws. So since many parties are at hand in handling this information, conflicts are a definite risk. So let's begin with our first panel, Ms. Ashikin. If you could clarify to the audience on what are the components in bioinformatics to help us understand a little bit better in this topic. Okay, thank you, Ms. Tasha, for the question. So I'm Scott McBride, presented on bioinformatic components in his articles, which are biological and protein sequences, biological database, and also software and hardware. So we will look into these three components one by one. So the first component is biological sequences such as DNA, RNA, and also protein sequences. So bioinformatic field focuses on these three molecules. But before we go into detail, let me introduce what is DNA, RNA, and also protein uh, briefly. So DNA is a large molecule and contains four nitrogenous bases, which are A, T, C, and T. So it is involved in the transmission of genetic genetic traits between generations and serve as a template for RNA transcription, uh, while the RNA acts as an intermediary molecule in genetic and also protein expression. So RNA is composed of RNA nucleotides, which are A, G, C, and also U, uracil. As for protein that comprises 20 different amino acids, they are described by a single letter designation. The next component is biological database. So till today, there are various biological databases that have been developed for the purpose of storing information regarding the biological data. So these databases are very crucial, especially in finding the unknown sequences from the unknown sources, since it helps the researchers to determine the functions of a particular sequence. So interestingly, these biological databases are not only able to store a large amount of data, it also can be easily searched, assessed, and also analyzed by the users. So we have come to the last or third component of bioinformatics, which is bioinformatics software and also hardware. So, so bioinformatics programs have been developed by the programmers to allow users like us to organize, assess, analyze, and also view the biological data. For an example, BLAST is used to calculate the similarity score by comparing the similarity between two or more sequences using suitable algorithms. For example, these algorithms allow users to discover that two unidentical proteins can have the same functions, which can be used to estimate the function of an unknown protein. Basically, that is all for the three basic components in bioinformatics. I hope this answers your question. All right, so thank you, Ms. Shikin. So, as we know, one of the most critical questions regarding whether bioinformatic components are patentable is whether they qualify as statutory subject matter under Section 101 of Patent Act. Under this section, it stated that whoever invents or discovers any new or useful process, machine, or any new and useful improvement may gain a part of the patent protection. So, uh, Ms. Aina, would you like to share with us about the subject matters that are allowed and not allowed for the patent protection? Thank you, Ms. Hanis. 
Okay, so patent protection under bioinformatics can also be categorized into three main components, which are protection for DNA, RNA and protein, biological database, as well as bioinformatics software and hardware. So now I'll give brief explanation for each of them. Firstly, patent protection for the physical or biological compositions of DNA, RNA and protein is allowed since they are comprised of more than two substances. However, the patenting extends only to the compositions of it, not the biological sequence inside that describes that particular composition. Also, the biological molecules should be man-made, by which it has been separated and purified from its natural settings. Next one is the patent protection for biological database. It is not allowed to patent biological database. It is only applicable to the process in creating the databases, but not the database itself. And the patentable process also has two outline limitations, which it has to be novel, and it should only cover the process, not the product. Lastly, it is allowed to, pot to patent bioinformatics software and hardware. The software may produce output that is very useful in the medical field, and therefore it fulfills the criteria of useful, concrete, and tangible. The hardware is also patentable if it fulfills the criteria under the regulations as a machine or apparatus. That's all from me. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Aina. So next, let me ask uh, Ms. Ain, could you explain on the application of copyright protection for this bioinformatics component? Okay, so first of all, before I started with the copyright protection on bioinformatic components, let me define what is copyright law. So basically, copyright law is the act that defines the requirements for copyrightable subject matters aimed at providing protection to the authors on their works. So the copyright protection for the first bioinformatic components, which are the DNA, RNA, and protein sequence, uh, probably is legal to be claimed for their original expression by the originators. Uh, of the DNA and RNA and the protein code nomenclature. However, the law has stated that the copyright registration is not granted to any gene sequences of DNA molecules and even if the scientists were to obtain the copyright protection for the sequences, uh, others might assert the defense of fair use. Next, based on the Copyright Act of 1976, it has been stated stated in, in this article that as long as the biological database is described as a compilation, it is eligible for a copyright protection since the database is considered as copyrightable subject matter. However, the originality of the compilation should be retained either in the selection or arrangement of the compiled facts. So on the other hand, this article also analyzed the applicability of copyright protection on the last bioinformatic components, which is the bioinformatics software and hardware. So the protection is not valid to be claimed, to be claimed unless, unless both of the source and object code contained with the literature code of the software were expressed in an original form. So basically, copyright protection is minimal for biological sequence and the databases and for bioinformatics software and hardware it can acquire copyright protection but only for specific elements of the bioinformatic codes. That's all from me. Thank you. That's a very good information. Thank you Ms. Ayn for giving a very clear explanation to us. So now let's move on to Mr. Fahud. So Mr. Fahud, could you please give a very brief overview of the Trade Secret Protection Act and its use in bioinformatics? Yes, thank you. So, um, the Trade Secrets uh, Protection Act is, is defined under the USCA as any information including but not limited to uh, compilations, programs, devices, and or methods which are able to be recognized as independent um, economic values due to not being easily accessible by individuals who can achieve um, an economic advantage right. by discovering. Um, this is a very unique system, actually, and it has a very unique advantage over the old school copyright and the federal patents um, because the protection that this system offers is indefinite, means that in, it's infinite, you can have it forever, but there's one condition. If there's any breach of privacy, if there's any breach of the um, agreements between the two parties, then the uh, trade secret protection is completely lost forever and you cannot regain any you cannot get back the same privacy. You can try to um, fix the damage caused, but you cannot get it, get the privacy back. 
And we use uh, the trace secret protection for uh, protecting DNA sequences, RNA sequences, and protein sequences. Although there are some loopholes, as I mentioned, once there's a breach of privacy, then this trace secret is lost. So um, we can also use this for biological databases, for protecting entire biological databases. Companies like Merck, um, they use this trade secret protection to completely protect their data. And uh, they also use it as, um, as a way for commercializing it. it, means that they're selling their database. Uh, but of course, this comes with its um, downside as well. As I mentioned, any breach of privacy will completely destroy the, data, the Trade Secret Protection Act and um, leak everything out to the public. It is also used for protecting bioinformatics software and hardware. Um, programmers can use the trade secret protection to um, protect their uh, code uh, and also the hardware that they build for, in, for use in bioinformatics. Um, the hardware is especially hard to protect because once you sell that hardware, if the person who you sold it to dismantles the hardware and finds out how it functions, then um, it is not really, it's not really private anymore. It's not secret anymore. So it loses its um, trade, it loses the trade secret protection. So although it has its good and bad, but we still need to develop it further and improve on it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Farhood. So the last question for our panelists. So we know that a bioinformatic component is important to be protected. For example, the application of IP protection for valuable data. So my question for Ms. Afifa is, is there, is there any arguments against IP protection for bioinformatics data? Thank you, Ms. Tasha, for asking the question. Okay, before, before that, we need to know uh, what is the intellect, the IP protection. So, IP protection, basically, the intellectual property refers to the inventions, ideas, design, and creations that are protected by US law. So there are only three ways to protect the intellectual property in the United States, which is through the use patents, uh, trademarks, or copyright. Uh, okay, from uh, the article that uh, we read, there are some people who argue with this IP protection. This is because some people believe that the human gen the human genome is belong to everyone and not property right. But uh, they also claim that the IP protection for bioinformatics with human medicine is against the patent medical research because it hinders medical research. Other than that, the copyright protection is caused by hindering medical research that will not extend to components functionality, while three secret protection focus on forced disclosure, which only for privately funded entities, which would be unworkable and unconstitutional. Lastly, the other points that people argue against uh, IP protection because of their discovery are publicly funded and thus belong to the public. And the arguments convinced has been largely muted by enactment of the Bill Act for patent protection. So basically, there are only some people that argue towards the IP protection. So that's all from me. Thank you. Okay, so thank you, Ms. Afifa, for your explanation. Now, let us ask Ms. Anis about the article that she and her friends have reviewed. So, Ms. Anis, is there any comments regarding to these articles? Okay, thank you, Ms. Anis. So, um, we found the article written by M. Scott McBride was very informative as he compiled all the stances from different kinds of perspectives. Many of the ideas presented by the author were very clear and detailed. Also, the list of references in each page were quite useful as it was easier to find out where the writer got the information without the need to scroll down until the last page. However, the reader might feel bored as this article has not included any diagrams, um, so only words that describe the point. Um, so for individuals that are involved in the bioinformatics field, this article might be helpful as it guides them on how to protect the bioinformatics component by following the intellectual property law. For example, uh, in the beginning, the author described the bioinformatics component before he proceeded with the first intellectual property, which is patent protection. Um, states that um, whether the issue of the bioinformatics component is qualified or not to be patented and then came up with some sentences that permit the patentability of the component. 
Um, the author also discussed on uh, copyright protection where he emphasized the criteria needed for a component uh, to be permitted with copyright protection and also discussed on the pros, uh, the pros and cons of the copyright protection uh, for each of the components. Furthermore, um, the author uh, mentioned the last intellectual property, which is trade secret protection, where the author focused on how this IP protection can protect the bioinformatic component by providing a clear explanation and also include some of the drawbacks. So um, all this information somehow uh, provides a good reference for bioinformatic researchers to get better understanding regarding the IP protection. Um, surprisingly, the last part of the article, some have argued that IP protection, as stated above, does not include the bioinformatic component. So, uh, hence, these arguments need further research to ensure a good outcome for both sides. So, I think that's all from, uh, from me. Thank you. Okay, so uh, thank you, Ms. Uh, Anis, for your willingness to share with us. Okay, so... In summary, we conclude that bioinformatics has three elements, which consists of biological and the hardware and software as well. These components are the keys to obtain the information and due to its benefits, several companies are willing to invest in it's available or not. The scope of IP protection that have been mentioned by our panels includes patent, copyright, as well as trade secret protection. These three has their own terms and certain measures need to be considered before they fall under those protections. Now we have come to the end part of the forum. We would like to say thanks to our panelists for willing to share with us about today's topic. Hopefully, this forum will be beneficial for everybody. Thank you and have a good day. <laughs>